Good morning, everyone. Josh and I are being COVID cautious again today, so we're using Zoom for this morning's video. And we thought maybe it would be good to talk about COVID a little bit. Is that okay with you, Josh? It is. I think it's on a lot of people's minds nowadays, so absolutely. Yeah, like it or not. Mm -hmm. You and I have both had some COVID testing experiences, and I was thinking it might be helpful for us to share those. You've done home testing as well as um, other testing, right? That's right. Yeah. So due to a couple different exposures and just having some cold-like symptoms um, and it being around the holidays, we wanted to get tested, my wife and I both. Um, so we, yeah, we had both the, uh, I think they call it the PCR test, which is the test where you go somewhere and they send your sample off to a lab somewhere and you get emailed or texted or called for the results. Um, and I've also done an at-home antigen test, which is where you do the test yourself and you take um, your sample and you drop it onto a little plastic thing and um, you get you get told the results that way. So yeah, I've done both of those and uh, they both involve, Melanie, what many people are probably familiar with now, which is sticking that little thing up your nose and it's not comfortable at all, but <laughs> that's the way to do it. Um, so let's talk about the home test a little bit. Mm -hmm. You you had a couple of tests and then you had to get more, is that right? Right, yeah. We had a family member that gave us a test and then um, I had to do quite a bit of calling around. Those tests were in high demand. Um, Lansing's local Walgreens at the time didn't have them. Some nearby other pharmacies didn't have them. I found a pharmacy that I had, I had had a connection with someone there um, a little farther north that had some tests that they were using to, to actually test people. And they were then taking tests out of this bulk massive test that they had and then selling them in Ziploc bags just because there was such a high demand for people who wanted at-home tests. So I bought you some got from a guy. them. Yeah, <laughs> right. A test guy. Right. I, mean, I remember distinctly calling a CVS pharmacy and um, the woman on the phone kindly explaining to me that they didn't have any tests. And I said, do you know of any nearby locations or anywhere that does? And she says, no, nobody has them. That's what she told me. And that was a week ago. So they might have new stock in, but I know that the people are having trouble keeping them in stock. And then uh, more recently, you also did, um, I don't know what they call it, an on-site test or a, you went somewhere and got tested. Yeah, right. So that's, I think they call that a PCR test. And I'm not sure what that stands for. Um, but that's the one that takes at least a day to get the results up to a couple days, few days to get the results. So and those are really considered more accurate than the home test. That's my understanding. Test? Yeah, okay. that's my understanding. And you can get those at Walgreens. Um, they're tightly scheduled now. You can get those at other locations. Um, South Suburban College has been a testing location for a long time. And they've wavered in, in their hours and what days they're open and stuff. But um, so you definitely, before you go there, check on the website. Um, but you create an account, you schedule it. And then when you show up, they just scan your phone and you already have all the questions answered about if you've been exposed and if you're experiencing symptoms and whatnot. And then they send you an email or a text saying, you have a new message at your MyChart account about whether or not you're positive or negative. So that's what I've done. Uh, I've done that twice in the last few weeks, and it's, it's fairly simple and easy, and you get to stay in your car the whole time. So uh, is it all right to say that you are at the moment waiting for results? I am. I'm waiting for results, hopefully today or possibly in the next couple of days, and that's because we had a close exposure to a family member who later tested positive, positive. and it's been some days since that happened, but... Um, I don't know if you can hear in my voice, I have some very, very mild cold-like symptoms, but I do want to just make sure before, um, before next week starts and I start seeing more people if I am negative or positive. I think more than ever before, everyone has some sort of testing experience or some sort of exposure story. Um, so that being said, I'll ask you about your, your testing experience. What was your experience like? Yeah, I guess mine was similar to yours. Um, my family was together before Christmas and then uh, found out a couple days later that two family members tested positive for COVID. Mm. One had symptoms, the other did not, mm. which was interesting. So I thought 
just to be sure I would get a test. Um, I, I went to Walgreens website and you can choose which Walgreens you want to, to get tested at. And then there's, a, there's an online calendar where you see which slots are available. So I went to the Walgreens on uh, Wentworth. It was very easy, like you said, it was a drive-through test. The person in the little jack-in-the-box window yeah. um, asked if I had been tested before, and I said no. And so she said step-by-step step what the test was all about and how to do it. Um, you know, they put it through the, the little portal mm -hmm. thing um, so I could grab it right out of my car, my driver's window. Uh, the, the instructions were very clear. I did the swab, put it back in the little vial, put that in a bag, and then put that back into the, the drive through thing. And that was it. Drove on my way. And then a couple days later, I got an email. And mm -hmm. there was a link in the email. I clicked on that, and it told me my test results were negative. Mm -hmm. So it was very easy. And yeah, it, it gave me peace of mind. Anytime you have a little sniffle or you're overly mm -hmm. fatigued, you wonder, is this COVID? Right. And I did have some questions. So it was, it was good to know that I was negative. Right. And I hope to remain negative, of course. We at the Lansing Journal have, have been doing our best. It's felt a little bit like when things first started to shut down in March of 2020, as we get, get yeah. news from here and from there, that this is canceled, this is postponed, we're doing this a different way. Um, so we'll link to some of those stories below, but I just want to highlight a couple of those updates uh, for the community that have come in this week in case you've missed it. Um, the big ones, of course, being the school districts. So District 215 announced that they are going to be remote through January 14 and return to school uh, the day after MLK Day, which is Tuesday, January 18. And Districts 158 and 171 are doing the same. They announced a little bit after District 215, but they are doing the same. So they are going to be remote through the end of next week. That is Friday, January 14. Um, District All three Lansing school districts are, are remote right now. Right. That's right. District 205, just to our, um, to our west, um, in-person instruction is going to resume. For, they're, they're remote now, and in-person instruction is going to resume Monday, January 24. So they're doing an extra week of remote. And then the Lansing Library has limited um, student attendance to 20 students at a time. And now the, the student section being in the basement of the Lansing Library with District 158. Uh, being remote, I don't know that they'll have much of an, an issue enforcing that anyways, because there won't be that many students perhaps coming over there. Um, so we'll link to all of those below. Um, and of course, there, there are other stories that, that we would encourage you to read, uh, press releases from, from the governor's office, from the Illinois Department of Public Health regarding uh, how you can access your vaccination card online, um, recommendations for when to get your booster dose. Uh, those, those seem to be updating and changing all the time. Um, so we, we are trying to keep up as best as we can with that. A good way to follow that is, of course, to subscribe if you haven't. Subscribe so you can get that in your email every morning. Um, and then if you think you've missed something or just to review, we encourage you to, to navigate your way to our health and safety category on our website. Um, when we post things regarding COVID, we always include them in our health and safety categories. Yeah, I also talked to Amy Todd yesterday of the Lansing mm -hmm. Area Chamber, um, and there was a um, chamber luncheon scheduled for next week, January 12, mm -hmm. and she made the decision to cancel that because of the, the uptick in the COVID numbers. Sad, she was feeling discouraged, of course, and it is discouraging to, to be back back where we were <laughs> two years ago. Right. Uh, it feels like it's not quite that bad, but uh, it, feels, it feels a little discouraging to be going through this again, but um, we got through it then as a community and we will get through it again. And the Lansing Journal is committed to providing information to keep people informed and connected throughout whatever, whatever the future holds. So stay healthy, everyone, stay safe. 
be careful. And uh, Josh and I will return next week in some form or another. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Thank you. See everyone. Bye.